Hello and welcome to another video by yours truly. My name is Bryn and I graduated in 2022 with my IB diploma. I run this channel where I make sometimes IB related videos, sometimes random content related videos coming soon, and I sometimes stream. Today I'll be talking about TOK. I ended TOK with an A. TOK is a little bit different from the rest of your IB classes, so that's what we're going to be talking about today. Let's get right into it. TOK stands for the Theory of Knowledge. That's a pretty vague sounding class name. That's how I felt, especially at the beginning. TOK is very different from the rest of your IB classes in that you won't be having it for a full year at a time. Instead, you will be having it for half a year. You will have what is called at my school seminar or a break course uh, for the first half of your junior year or your first IB year if you're not from America. And you will be having TOK for that second half of that first IB year or your junior year. And then for your senior year or your second IB year, you will be having TOK first for the first semester and you will be having a uh, seminar or break period after in the second semester. At my school, that leftover semester was used to teach at first extended essay and then later on it was used as a study period for the rest of our IB courses. Your school might be a little different though, so be sure to check with your IB instructor if you have any questions about how your course will be run. So let's get into the nitty gritty of it. What is TOK anyways? So TOK, like I said, stands for the theory of knowledge. It's a pretty vague understanding for a class, but once you get down to it, it's not so big. TOK has two main parts. This is different from most of your other IB courses where there will be several parts where you have an exam and you have some sort of a written component. TOK is different in that there is no exam for TOK. You heard me right, there is no test for TOK. So you will not have to sit for an exam. So why is it important? Well, you're going to need TOK to get your IB diploma. If you aren't diploma bound, then you probably don't need to concern yourself with TOK and you might wanna ask your teacher if you can be transferred out of it. TOK doesn't get you a number grade and can't be used for colleges for credit. Instead, it gives you a letter grade, similar to extended essay. They're two different letter grades, but together they can give you a certain number of points for your IB diploma. These can range from zero points all the way up to three points. So it's a little different because you need to factor in how you did on extended essay to understand how many points you're getting from TOK. That being said, in order to pass TOK, you need to earn a letter grade of D. This letter grade isn't provided by your teacher, but rather is on the basis of two IB assessments, which you will turn in, both written in different years of your IB schooling. First, happening in your junior year or your first IB year, and the second happening in your senior year or your second IB year. The one happening in your junior year is going to be called the TOK Exhibition, and the one happening in your senior year is going to be called the TOK Essay. For more information about these, hang on really quick. First, a brief overview of the class. The thing about TOK is that every school's course will look a little bit different. This is because the teachers and the students have a lot of choice in TOK. There are two main parts to the class of TOK. The first is going to be the themes, and the second is going to be how they compare to areas of knowledge. There is one mandatory theme, and there are five optional themes, of which your teacher or your class must pick two. The mandatory theme is knowledge and the knower, where you will talk about yourself in regards to knowledge. The five optional themes, and excuse me as I read them from my notes, are knowledge and technology, knowledge and language, knowledge and politics, knowledge and religion, and knowledge and indigenous societies. Some teachers will give the class the option of which two of those five they'd like to talk about, and some teachers will choose for you based on their own understanding and breadth of knowledge. So I mentioned that there are themes and areas of knowledge. So what's an area of knowledge? Well, there are five areas of knowledge of which your teacher must cover all five. Excuse me as I read from my notes again. History, human sciences, natural sciences, the arts, and mathematics. Your teacher must cover examples from each of those five areas of knowledge. But what are you really learning in TOK? I'd say the main thing that you're getting out of the course itself is good discussion, which hopefully you should be having as TOK is a very much a seminar based class, as well as examples that you will be using for your TOK essay in specific. If you are not getting specific examples, I urge you to write something in the comments and I can try to help you out or reach out to your teacher or IB coordinator so that that can be arranged. So let's talk about what you're really here for, because I know you're not teaching yourself TOK. You're here to write your exhibition or your essay. So let's get started talking about those. First, we'll talk about your exhibition. Your TOK exhibition will take place in your junior year or your first year of IB. There will be 35 prompts, and by prompts I mean questions. These questions remain consistent across all years. The hardest part, in my experience, is picking your prompt and choosing which objects you want to go with it. So what is an object in this context? An object doesn't need to be an object at all. 
It can be anything as long as you can take a picture of it. The IB gives examples of objects being anything like a newspaper article, a tweet, a picture of you in the orchestra, or a picture of a basketball you used in gym. You will choose one and only one of these 35 prompts to write for your TOK exhibition. So how should you go about doing that? Well, my recommendation is to take a look at all 35, get them on a piece of paper or a Word doc. Go through and do an initial reading. Delete or cross out the ones that you don't think you can come up with a single example of an object to do, or that don't strike you as interesting. Look at your remaining prompts. What do you have left? Are any of them especially interesting? Any especially dull? Cross them out. Get rid of them. Write down any list of objects, whether you have a brief idea of what you might write about them or a solid understanding of what you're going to say, and list them out for each of your prompts. Which of the prompts do you have the most objects for? Which do you have the most in-depth understandings of? Do any of the questions call out to you in specific? Those would be the ones to reach for the most. It's important to note that the IB recommends that you have a basis in a TOK theme for your exhibition. You only need to talk about three objects for your prompt, but I recommend you come up with at least five. So what do I recommend you use for objects? Consider your prompt. Is your prompt more about personal understandings or worldly views? Are you looking to define something or understand a connection? These are important things to consider when considering your objects. For me, again, my prompt was about personal experience and knowledge, so my objects were all hinged on my own personal understanding and experience. Something I would like to note is that I believe that your exhibition will be best when you are rooted in your objects as strongly as you can be. Does this mean you have to be in every picture you take? Absolutely not. I was in none of mine. Does this mean every single object has to be about you personally? Absolutely not. In fact, I believe the best way to go about picking your three objects from the list of five or more that you've acquired for your prompt is to choose one from each category. One specifically about yourself. Then I recommend you choose something about your family or your community. And finally, I recommend you choose something worldly or in a vast community. This helped me write about my own experiences in regards to the objects as well as other people's understandings, such as my family or the rest of the world and my community. There are 35 prompts and don't get me wrong, that's a lot. So you need to consider what your own prompt is and how you should best go about understanding it. If you have questions or want help, again, leave a comment. I read all the comments on this channel and I will be happy to help you out. Now, on to the more nitty-gritty of the TOK exhibition. You've already picked out your prompt, you've already picked out your objects, you already have an understanding of how you want to write, so how do you go about it? Well, the IB limits you to 950 words. Titles are included, unless your teacher tells you otherwise, and you must have a title for each of your objects. Any acknowledgments or references or sources that you have, those do not count for this 950 word limit, just as with any other TOK paper. I recommend structuring your essay like this. Have your title, which is your prompt, and then list your theme if you're going off of one. After that, write a brief opening paragraph. Where are you planning to go? How are you planning to make your connection? What is your case on this prompt? This should only be one to two sentences. You only have 950 words. Next, list the title for the, your first object. Your objects don't need to go in any order unless they help to prove your prompt in a specific order. After you've listed the title or just what your object is for your first object, I want you to include a picture of that object. This needs to be about a quarter of the page so that you can be able to see it, but just know that as long as it's centered on the page and easily recognizable, it doesn't matter what size it is. After that, state your claim for that object. Repeat again with your other two objects. Interestingly enough, the IB considers your TOK exhibition to be your IA. I don't know why, but they do. In this sense, your teacher will only be reviewing one draft of your paper that you submit, and after that, you will be submitting your final draft. Be sure to ask questions while you have the opportunity. The TOK exhibition is 33% of your overall grade in TOK. Make sure you're trying to connect it to the world or yourself in some capacity, and you have an overall broader scope that might relate to one of the six TOK themes. You are recommended to spend eight hours on the TOK exhibition, but I know I spent a lot more than that. Place emphasis on the context of your photos in the world. Consider writing or thinking about multiple prompts before deciding on your prompt, and even when you're writing, consider changing if you're struggling too much with the prompt you you've chosen. You're never locked into a prompt until you submit your final draft. And finally, my own recommendations for the TOK exhibition, connect it to yourself. Talk about yourself as much as possible. Relate your objects to your own understandings of the world and your place in it. Make sure every single word in those 950 words means something and relate to your overall claim regarding to your prompt. Do not change your prompts at all from what they have listed in the IBO and make sure that you are answering the question that your prompt asks. Now let's move on to the TOK essay. 
TOKS is a lot different than the TOK exhibition. It is worth 66% of your overall TOK grade, the remaining two thirds that weren't made up for by the exhibition. The TOK essay will be completed in your senior year or your second year of IB. Unlike with the TOK exhibition, these prompts will be changing every single year, and instead of calling them prompts, they're called titles. There will be six titles for you to choose from, and again, they change every year, so it's important to look at your own year and triple check you're looking at your own year. Do not alter in any way, shape, or form. Do not alter the title that you are given. Some titles, if not all of them, will require you to talk about one of the specific areas of knowledge it has listed in addition to one that you choose. You must talk about this area of knowledge. This might be a major part in your selection of your title, so pay attention to which area of knowledge it's asking you to talk about. The title that I chose was about distinguishing between good and bad interpretations and required me to talk about the arts and one other area of knowledge. I picked natural sciences. When you go through TOK, you will be accumulating examples that you can use for your TOK essay. Consider what your class talked about, the areas of knowledge, the examples within them. You are not limited to these examples that you use on your TOK essay, but it will help your researching immensely if you already have your topics picked out and your ideas picked out based on what you've talked about in class. In this way, the TOK is the most obtuse and obscure class that you will take for the IB. None of the things that you talk about in class will ever be specifically related to what you do for the assessments. You are recommended to spend 10 hours on your TOK essay, but in all honesty, I'm not sure I did. This is a 1600 word essay, and so it is significantly longer than your TOK exhibition, which is why it makes up for two thirds of your grade instead of just one third. You will be working with your teacher much more heavily on this than you did in your TOK exhibition as well. First, you and your teacher should review the different titles. After that, you and your teacher should discuss your initial exploration and your initial ideas. Next, you should submit a draft and your teacher should give you comments either written down or oral on this draft. So what helpful tips and tricks do I have for my TOK essay? Honestly, form a good basis. You should have a very good idea of how you want to answer the title before you even sit down to write your essay. I think it's a great idea to list out the different pieces of evidence, and I recommend two pieces of evidence from each area of knowledge. This makes for quite a lengthy essay, but you don't need to go about both of them in the same level of depth. The examples that I used in my essay were about paradigm shifts, germ theory, Guernica and its origins, as well as the false Da Vinci um, painting. Those were what I wrote about in my essay. I forgot to mention it, but my essay ended up being about nine paragraphs and included a title page, which listed my title and my word count, as well as a works cited page at the end. I explored multiple different facets of what a good and bad interpretation are, how we decide between what's good and bad, and how we change our opinions. I think that looking from multiple points of view and considering many different perspectives on your question and your answer, not just giving one specific answer, is probably the key to a TOK essay. Remember, the whole point of TOK is the theory of knowledge. How do we know what we know? How do we understand it? How do we connect to knowledge? And so if you can look at knowledge and examine it from multiple people's point of view or from multiple points of view in general, your essay will be stronger for it. Something else that I think earned me a lot of points on my TOK essay was the fact that I looked at change changing interpretations. Not just distinguishing between what was good and bad, but how we change between those good and bad interpretations. I still answered the title question and addressed all parts of it, but I also put in my own interpretation. I think that this is something that's vital to your TOK essay and could perhaps help you along the way. Listen to your teacher though. If your teacher says that makes your essay weaker, you should take it out. Again, I think my strong suit was that I was able to answer the question in the title both in the way that the IBO wanted me to answer it and in my own way. So let's review the main points about the TOK essay. This should take you 10 hours. You have a word limit of 1600 words, and with most IB writings, this doesn't include any sources that you have, but it does include quotations. There will be six titles and you must choose one. And if that one title states that you must talk about a specific area of knowledge, you must talk about that area of knowledge. You cannot alter the title in any way. Finally, in theory, your teacher should be more help on the TOK essay than they were in the exhibition. So if you feel like you're not getting enough out of your teacher, ask them if they can help more. It never hurts to ask. And with that, we've talked about everything relating to TOK. 
We've talked about the different themes and how you go about choosing the themes that you're going to be learning in class, the areas of knowledge, and the fact that you must cover them all. The TOK exhibition, which is your IA, counts for one third of your course grade, and the TOK essay, which counts for two thirds of your course grade. Remember, there is no exam for TOK, so these two written pieces are vital to your grade. And remember, you must earn a D in TOK, so make sure you reread your submissions and edit them wisely. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so, so much for watching. If this video was helpful for you in any way, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. If you subscribe, make sure you turn on the bell notifications so that you can get a notification when I post new videos or when I go live. If you want to ask me questions with a guaranteed answer, then feel free to pop into a live stream. With that, thank you so, so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.